What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Ranger Suarez, who had six Ks in six innings, giving up four runs. He had this nasty cutter and changeup. He faced Kyle Bradish, who had this two-seamer that was kind of paintish. Let's appeal this to robo -um fan behind the plate and see what his ruling is. Andrew Heaney had three Ks in five innings, giving up three runs, and had these sliders. Jake Irvin had seven Ks in six innings, giving up four runs, and had this combination of fastballs and curveballs. I actually really like Jake Irvin's curveball. Carlos Rodon had four Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up one run. He relied on his usual mix of overpowering fastballs and wicked sliders, and picked up a White Castle special. You remember, that's a strikeout on three disgusting sliders. What I love most about Rodon, though, is the energy that he pitches with. After this K, he talks to himself and says, give me the f***ing ball. And then here he gets absolutely fired up and yells out what looks like, b you f*** off. Inject this energy into my veins. This reminds me of my conversation with Carlos Rodon at the All-Star Game last year when I asked him why he was so dominant. Oh, I throw angry fastballs, and I just throw them to see if they can hit them. That's why I'm so good. Rodon outdueled Jose Quintana, who had five Ks in six innings, giving up two earned runs, and had this curveball and changeup. Ryan Walker had this filthy sinker, absolutely unhittable, and I decided to put a tail on it so you can see the ridiculous movement of that pitch. Lance Lynn had five Ks in four and two-thirds innings. He did give up seven earned runs. He started off well with his elevated fastball in the ring-em-up K strut. But the highlight of his outing was probably this Tucker Barnhart fake bunt. They both went to the same high school in Indiana. And Barnhart knew how much Lance Lynn hated fielding bunts. So of course he had a mess with him. And look at Barnhart's face. Priceless. Lynn faced Marcus Stroman who had four Ks in three and a third innings and also gave up seven runs. Not exactly a pitcher's duel in the Windy City. Stroman did have these nasty sliders and this absolutely chalked sinker, getting absolutely all of the batter's box chalk. I like Stroman's nod here like, yep, that was a strike, knowing full well that wasn't close. Zach Gallon had eight Ks in six and a third innings, giving up five runs. He relied on his fastball, his slider, his changeup, and this sick knuckle curve that went back foot and got the sword. Gallon faced Jack Flaherty, who had four Ks in five innings, giving up three runs, and had this fastball and curveball. Gavin Williams had five Ks in four scoreless innings, relying mostly on his mid to upper 90s fastball. And he outdueled Alec Marsh, who had three Ks in two and two-thirds innings, giving up four runs, and had this painted curveball. Johan Oviedo had five Ks in six innings, giving up only one run, and had this fastball and slider for a sword. He faced Seth Lugo, who had eight Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs, and had this four-seam fastball, this two-seamer, and this curveball with 3,233 RPMs. Spencer Strider had 10 Ks in six and a third innings, giving up two earned runs. Strider dominated with both his fastball and slider, and had this 99-mile-an-hour fastball at the knees that looked like it teleported to the plate. As a hitter, you're waiting for this thing to drop below the zone, but it never does. Strider's sliders were also wicked. Strider's sliders. I'm poetry ninja. But those sliders were filthy. And here's an overlay of his 99 mile an hour fastball and 87 mile an hour slider. And you can see why that combination is so devastating. I posted a poll yesterday wondering who y'all have as the favorite for the NL Cy Young Award. And with about 2,600 votes in, y'all have Spencer Strider as the leader. My guess is it's going to come down to how much you value ERA versus Strider's dominance in basically every other category. It's definitely going to come down to who pitches the best down the stretch, though. Strider faced Brian Bayo, who had four Ks in six innings, giving up three runs, and had these cutters and elevated fastball. Joe Ryan had seven Ks in three and two-thirds innings, giving up four runs. And he got Ks on his fastballs, his splitters, and sliders. Ryan faced Bryce Miller, who had seven Ks in five and two-thirds innings, but gave up four home runs and six runs total. Miller had these fastballs, including this cheese at the knees, as well as his sliders and changeups. Miller seemed to throw a lot more changeups in this game, and they looked pretty effective. It's going to be important for him to keep working in his secondary pitches. 
His fastball can be dominant, but if hitters know it's coming, eventually they're going to figure it out. Yusei Kikuchi had 8 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 1 run, and had these fastballs, sliders, and curveballs, and I was really impressed by his curveball. He ended up with 5 whiffs on his 10 curveballs this game for a 50% whiff rate. Good math, Ninja. Of course, my favorite moment of this game was this K pose by Kikuchi after getting a K on that slider. A great combination of pure electricity and a little bit of awkwardness. Protect this man at all costs. Sandy Alcantara looked like Sandy Alcantara yesterday. He had seven Ks in a complete game, giving up only one run on five hits. He really had his fastball working, sitting in the upper 90s and touching 100, and also had these wicked sliders. A great outing by Sandy Alcantara. Sandy outdueled Zach Eflin, who had three Ks in four innings, giving up five runs and had this fastball and curveball. Ben Lively had three Ks in six and two-thirds innings thanks to his elevated fastball and painted fastball. And he faced yesterday's filthiest starting pitcher of the day, Freddie Peralta. Peralta had 13 strikeouts in six scoreless innings and was absolutely dominant. He used his whole arsenal, including these fastballs, curveballs, sliders, and change-ups, and just sat hitters down left and right. Peralta's 13 strikeouts tied a career high. And this actually may have been the best game I've seen Peralta pitch. Pure domination. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Wandy Peralta had this changeup and fastball. Yoel Piams had this slider. Matt Brash had this filthy slider. Clay Holmes had this nasty slider. Kenley Jansen had this sick slider. I sense a lot of sliders. Craig Kimbrell had this dirty knuckle curve and overpowering fastballs. Mark Leiter Jr. had this vicious splitter. And my filthiest reliever of the day yesterday was Devin Williams. Look at these absolutely disgusting airbenders. One of these had a spin rate of almost 3,000 RPMs. Totally unhittable alien stuff. I had talked to Devin Williams at the All-Star game because I noticed his airbender had been running a little bit more horizontally. And he said he actually wanted to get more depth on it with less horizontal movement. And it looks like he did been a little shorter and it's running more which I'd rather it be the other way so over the past like week or so it's it's gotten better like I threw one the other day that was minus six it wasn't as as much horizontal but it was minus six so I'll take that and now my pitching ninja moment of zen it's Ozzy Albies getting treated like a little toy after hitting a home run baseball is awesome What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Kodai Senga for 6Ks or more, then take Tanner Bybee for 6Ks or more, and top it off with Shohei Otani for 8Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 